There's nothing more than I like than a nice hot cup of tea. Oh, I'm just going to leave that to cool down for a second. As a nation of tea, and to a lesser extent coffee lovers, it wouldn't come as any shock to know that the average household boils their kettle 1,500 times per year. That's just over four times a day. We bought a temperature adjusted kettle around six years ago, with the main aim of not burning our coffee by using boiling water. Apparently, that's a thing, and it seemed like a good idea at the time. In reality, we haven't used the variable temperature function and just clicked it on as normal to the default 100 degrees. We all know the standard advice of boiling just the water you need and descaling a kettle to keep it working efficiently. But with the recent increase in the price of electricity and aiming to use less in the first place to help both our pockets and the planet, it got me thinking. Do we really need to boil the kettle at all? Or should that be a thing of the past? And how much would we save if we just heated our water to just enough? To do this, we're going to be using this Tapo, Tapo energy monitor from TP-Link to see how much energy our kettle uses to heat the water up to 80, 90 and then 100 degrees, and then work out the difference. Installation for this device is really simple. Firstly, download the Tapo app from either the App Store or Google Play. Open the Tapo app, tap to add a device. The Tapo P110 can be found under plugs. Plug in your energy monitor within range of your Wi-Fi and check the LED light is blinking, green and orange. Once your device has successfully been found, you can connect it to your Wi-Fi using your password. Once named and located, your smart energy monitor is ready to use. It seems a good time to mention that we've been tracking our month by month energy reduction progress here, and you can download our fully customizable spreadsheet to keep an eye on your monthly usage and set a monthly reduction target by using the link to this and the Tapo device in the video description box below. For this experiment, and to keep things consistent, I'm going to heat 700 ml of water, a reasonable amount for two cups of tea, measuring out the amount each time. I'm also going to ensure the starting temperature of the water is the same or at least within half a degree of each other. First up is heating the water to 80 degrees Celsius. You can see on the app the current power draw of the kettle is being registered here. On reaching 80 degrees, you can see that 64 watts have been consumed. Now for 90 degrees. Again, check the temperature and set away. As it's within the same hour, the app records this under the same spike, but we can work out the difference by taking away our previous usage of 64 watts for 80 degrees from the total spike of 133 watts, giving us 69 watts difference and consumption for 90 degrees. Lastly, our default setting of 100 degrees, Again, to work out the difference, we'll take away our previous total usage of 133 watts for 80 and 90 degrees from the total spike of 228 watts, giving us 95 watts difference and consumption for 100 degrees. So, looking at our various figures, we can see that it takes 64 watts to heat 700 ml of water to 80 degrees, 69 watts to 90 degrees, and 95 watts to 100 degrees. There really isn't much difference between 80 and 90 degrees in terms of watts. But I do find in 80 degrees my tea bag doesn't diffuse quite so well. First world problems, I know. However, 90 degrees is absolutely perfect. Good diffusion and a hot but not scalding cup of tea. So, with 90 the new 100 degrees, how much electricity, money and CO2 could we save per year? The difference between heating to 90 and 100 degrees is 26 watts. On average we use our kettle for cups of tea or coffee at least 5 times per day. So. 26 watts times 5 gives us 130 watts per day, times by 365 equals 47,450 watts or 47.45 kilowatt hours less electricity per year. Going by the current price cap freeze electricity rate of 0.34p per kilowatt hour, that would be a saving of around £16.13 pence per year and a CO2 reduction of just over 9 kilograms. Not groundbreaking and I'm certainly not going to be retiring to the Bahamas anytime soon, but it all counts. And it isn't just the kettle you can use the Tapo device on. You can see really how much energy your fridge, TV or even Alexa is using. If you found this video useful then please like it and subscribe to the channel to keep up with new content we'll be uploading. And if you enjoyed this video and you're looking to save on your energy bills, I think you'll find this video useful to find out how we wiped out a massive 3000 kilowatt hours of our gas consumption. Grab a hot drink, but not boiling, and I'll see you there.